and welcome to Inside Lagos. I'm Ade Doja, Salam Adeni. Today's episode is a special one as we will be speaking with the first executive governor of Lagos State, Alhaji Latif Jakonde. We want to talk about his achievements and the Lagos we have today. Many thanks for joining us. Lagos is a cosmopolitan city and the pride of Nigeria. Since it was founded in 1967, the state has enjoyed steady progress and today it is Nigeria's biggest economy. The open secret is that Lagos State has enjoyed progressive leadership over the years. One of the leaders that laid the foundation of modern Lagos State is Latif Kayode Jakonde, its first executive governor, the man many people fondly called LKJ. Streets, schools, estates, roads and hospitals have been named after him. He occupies an important space in the history of Lagos State. He was elected governor in 1979. In this special package, we estray his government through the eyes of those that worked closely with his government. One of them is Tokumbo Jekunle. He was among those assigned by Radio Lagos to produce documentaries on his achievements, particularly in the area of education in 1981. LKJ is an enigma, um, a strong influence in Nigeria's administrative annals. It's a man whose achievement towers above his status in the society. Bayo Shiemi was his chief press secretary. From his ascension of office as governor, it was like he took legal state off the trash. But how did it all start? Let's go back to 1979 to tell the story. Latif Kayode Jakonde was a journalist. In 1979, he offered himself for service. He promised Lagosians what many thought was impossible. When elected, his administration touched every sector of Lagos economy and transformed them for good. He brought a little bit of what people's expectations should be of government. It's just one in a class. Perhaps the biggest achievement of his government was his redefinition of school system in Lagos State. Prior to his election, Lagos schools had very few classrooms to accommodate the growing student population. In those days, we had issues, no classrooms. The schools were very, very, very limited. That was why, at that time, we had three shift system of people going to school in the mornings, in the afternoons, and in the evenings. So you have children coming back from school, very tired, weak, and hungry sometimes. Some didn't have the opportunity of even having private lessons after that. But the teachers were also coming. Some teachers would take double shifts. They do the morning, close up, wait for the afternoon um, kids to come. They took, it was stressful. In 1979, one of the campaign promises of Latif Jakonde was to abolish the shift system. You see, that word abolish shift system alone took Lagos by storm. It, it became, well, fine, let's see the schools. He promised free education for all and established schools in every neighborhood. Why some of us, even in his team, believed in him and his ability to make it happen? We had a few of us who had their doubts and felt this thing might not be possible after all. But these promises came at the time the military government in Lagos State was considering raising tuition because the state was broke. After the election, the outgoing military administrator of Lagos State, Captain Ebutu Ukiwe, want Latif Jakonde and his team to jettison their plan to run free education because the state could not fund it. But Governor Jakonde insisted he would deliver his campaign promise. It was an ambitious project that many thought would fail. He did say that he was elected on the basis of that promise to the people. He said, whatever the obstacles on the way, 
be they mineral, human, or vegetable, that all these obstacles will be removed to make free education at all levels possible. To the surprise of all, Governor Jack Onde implemented his free education program. He abolished the shift system and constructed additional 11,500 classrooms across the state. Before he came in, he identified the land spaces where he would build those schools, got a prototype of the schools and started building schools. He, we were opening schools, we were opening at a time when the, the, the um, opening ceremonies were taken off. We were opening schools, maybe 10 in a day. We, to show leadership, he directed his cabinet members to enroll their kids in public schools. All the good things of life would. My son was attending estate nursery school here in Ilupeju. I had to withdraw him to the newly established estate primary school. The school is still standing. Majority of my friends where I grew up attended the public schools. And today, today, as I'm telling you, they are in highly placed situations. They are better in some ways than some people. They are everywhere in the world and they flaunt it really oh, frontless. They come out and tell people I'm a product of the Jaconde era. One of my younger brothers, who is now today is a medical doctor, actually benefited from that. He went to one of the so-called um, Jaconde schools in Agege and uh, when it was time, when he did his um, WAEC, he had uh, the, the, the second best result in, in, in Nigeria, in WAEC. But as he inaugurated schools across Lagos, there was a growing demand for more teachers and administrative personnel. Governor Jack Onde established teachers' colleges in Lagos State and built the Lagos State University to meet the demand for quality personnel. Not only did they build colleges, he brought in super heads to administer those schools. Doctors, professors, in their, they left what they were doing and put everything they had into the teaching, teacher training institutions. And they were churning out teachers in droves. Majority of those teachers started their teaching lives in these new schools. His space setting achievements extended to the provision of affordable houses for Lagosians. The, the team of architects and engineers put together. He briefed them that he wanted the type of accommodation, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, that could be affordable to people. And after a lot of tinkering with so many ideas, we zeroed in on providing two bedroom accommodation for 5,000 Naira and three bedrooms for 6,000 Naira. Some people we have the opinion that that was not achievable. But the man, because he had done his own work well, believed it was possible. How was it possible? He approached manufacturers of cement, manufacturers or suppliers of steel, iron rods, and other building materials. So, government negotiated with them to buy these items in bulk. And we decided to establish a company called Building Materials Company with his headquarters at Maturi. So, all of these building materials, nails, iron rods, cement, roofing sheets, planks, were stored in the building's mat materials company. Because the architects, the engineers had done their own work, they were able to say, look, Mr. Contractor, if you want to do business with us to help us build a two-bedroom flat or a three-bedroom flat, this is the cost. They provided profit margin for them. Now, how that was possible was that because government purchased these items direct from source, they came out cheap. These critics are talking, uh, these things are not going to last. 
they are not going to last because they, don't, they didn't build them well. And most of the people who built them or contracted, they, they, they got the contract, didn't know anything about building rules. You know, so many things they said, so many things they said. And I still drive around today. <laughs> and those structures are still there. Uh, many people living in those houses now, particularly under the age of 35, have no idea who built those uh, mass houses, which till today, you know, are still in existence. Today, Latif Jaconde's signature remains bold in the health sector. It was incredible. Some areas never breathed of a health center. He upgraded the old health centers and they, they, they became primary in such that they were on the grassroots level. And today, those places have now become general hospitals. It's on record that his government constructed the Lagos State Secretariat, the roundhouse occupied by the Deputy Governor of Lagos today. None of the six or seven blocks standing as at that time, none had any elevator. None had window pails fixed. There were only doors. But in spite of that unreadiness, he decided that if he had to wait until everything had been provided, nothing would work. He decided to move in, in that state, such that any time we came to work in the morning with our air black, by the time we finish work in the evening, we will go home with brown hair because of the dust in that area. His administration was also credited with establishing Lagos State Television, Lagos State Radio, construction of Adinyo Waterworks, and many other pace-setting projects in the state. He achieved all of these without borrowing a penny from anywhere. He, he walked from his house at Ilupeju. I was living in Ilupeju too at the time in my dad's house, just about uh, two, less than two kilometers or maybe to, to his own house. Um, you will not believe it, he didn't move into any government house. He was riding in his Toyota Crown. He didn't change his car. It was the vehicle he brought into government that he rode for years. He didn't have um, a retinue of um, so many guards like um, our governors today. Uh, I can remember at a point in time, I think he had about five, if I can still recollect very well, um, people protecting him and he was not, you know, he was always very anxious about their presence around him because he wants to mingle with the people, um, particularly with the poor people. He was more than a revolutionary. He, he, he was, as I said, a peace setter. He laid the foundation. He found people. He found places. He found Lagos and developed the culture. That's the man with the vision for me. Inside Lagos paid a costly visit to the 87-year-old Peseta at his residence in Ilupeju, the same house he lived in when he was governor of Lagos State. Daddy, thank you so much for having inside Lagos in, in your house. Thank you so much. It's a real privilege speaking with the first civilian governor of uh, Lagos State. Okay, during the election, um, what was your campaign slogan? Well, as you know, as you know I had three important goals. Free education, free health service, and uh, full employment for all. Again, I have nothing but gratitude to, to God Almighty for making a success of these programs. Good. Okay. So what, because um, when I was in secondary school, I still enjoyed part of your um, Japonde buildings that you built. Tell us how you were able to achieve all this. Well, uh, uh, let's uh, start with education. Uh, housing was one of my objectives. Housing, housing, Jack no. on the estates, mm. affordable housing. How were you able to do that, sir? 
Well, I organized myself with all the available information and data. I knew that most, at the time I took office, very many people had difficult housing. I, and then I made up my mind to make an impact and provide better and cheaper houses. Okay. You will find that in all, in, in all my, in my time as governor, these three goals. Yeah. Housing, education, health. Well, I can only thank God for assisting me to achieve them. Mm. Take the question of education. Yes. At the time I took office, it was bad for education. Mm. And there were all sorts of obstructions. Children of one class and another. And I took firm decision to abolish all such obstructions. I decided to make education free. And th I, I can never forget, I can never, never forget that God Almighty made it possible. Well, the reason I am today happy is that several people come across me and, and, and tell me I attended your school. I have nothing but gratitude to God Almighty that so many, so many people were able to benefit from that scheme. How many doctors, how many lawyers, I don't know. But I know that God in His, in his mercy made it possible to achieve what many people thought was impossible. So how were you able to fund it? Since it was free, nobody is paying the government back. No. Oh. Books were free? How did it happen? You see, you see I think maybe looking back, I think it was because the programs themselves touched every life. So people supported you? And that is, I think that was why we had that enormous support. Financially? From Nigeria. Yes, for financially. Mm. Pay, they pay their taxes mm. and we, did, we didn't have to complain. So, yes, so Lagos. The, the, Lagos, Lagos. Lagos State is a very, very uh, good state to, to govern. Yeah, your vision was so great then. And in 1981, you actually tagged your budget, a budget of change. What was the state budget that time? As at that time, what was the state budget that you were able to achieve all that? Well, let me tell you that budget, budget, budgeting depends on the budgeter. And it will be Surprising to some that the budget we achieved was achieved within the state without going out. It's a question of management. 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 And we, we can never, we can never forget. You had your commissioners then. What was the criteria for appointing your commissioners? I insisted on the 
the necessity for commitments, commitment to our programs. Of course, since it was party politics, all, all my commissioners were from the, the, the party to which I belonged. Even so, I, I, I ensured that each of my commissioners was committed to the program we have set on housing, on education, on health. I also feel eternally grateful to Al Almighty for the, pro the products of these institutions. How many doctors, how many lawyers, how many? Uh, no, God is great. God is great. Yeah, Thank God. Do you now see the Lagos of your dream now? Yes. How? Lagos State has gone forward. Where you left it? In every aspect of life. Okay. It is still now a state of which one can be proud. There is no other state in Nigeria that is in the position that the US state is. And uh, I feel very happy that some, many, many people are thinking of having a special status for Lagos State. Well, you, nobody can dispute that. There is no, no, no group of Nigerians that are not in Lagos State. No. no. Every family is represented in Lagos State, yes. Every, every. There is no section of the community. In fact, everything that God grants is here. And the people of Lagos State welcome all other Nigerians. So Lagos State deserves to be given a special position as a special state among all the states. Okay, when you look back, Daddy, do you have things that you should have done that you would have said that, oh, I would have done this, and even I'm still the governor. And what are those things? No, quite frankly, I have no regrets. Mm. How would you describe Governor Akimumi Ambodi, the Ambody present is, governor? He's is, 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 is doing well since uh, he took over. And from all indications, he, he will make a very good governor. Can you continue to live long? What would you like to be remembered for? All I, I pray God for is service to the people. Service to the service people. Service to the people. Service to the people. That is what you want to be remembered for. Yes. Service to the people of Lagos. Hmm. Thank you so much. And then um, Daddy has said that to make a good leader, you have to be determined, to be disciplined, and of course, know your goals. Thank you so much, sir, <laughs> for having us in your house. Even at 87, Latif Kayode Jakonde's candle remains unmistakable. The 10th anniversary of the sacking house of Agege, one of the most popular areas in Lagos and also the installation ceremony for some council chiefs. The Hausa community here is known for keeping the peace and has over years forged a progressive partnership with the Lagos state government. They always give me the maximum support needed to make Agege move forward. 
Governor Akiumi Ambode, who was represented by the Commissioner for Home Affairs, Abdul Latif Abdul Hakim, commended the Hausa community for ensuring that its members coexist peacefully with others in their communities. His Excellency urges the Hausa community and indeed every Lagosian to continue you know, in this spirit of oneness and togetherness. So we wish them a very successful celebration and then uh, urge all other traditional rulers to take a cue from the Seriki Hausawa and, you know, and the community in Lagos. The Sarkin Hausawa of Agege Al-Aji Musa Mohammed Dogo congratulated Lagos on its impending 50th anniversary and promised that the Hausa community in the state will continue to be law-abiding. Everybody as he is then, uh, making a celebration of maybe even one day or a week or month or a year anniversary. It's a happy day for him. So we have to thank ourselves. We'll spare our life up to date. The Sarkin Hausa anniversary is a big event among the Hausa Fulani people living in Lagos State. And with that, we draw the curtains on today's edition of Inside Lagos. Bye-bye.